Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Breckenridge Lutheran this morning. For all who are gathered here, we hope that your, your service is blessed today by the words that you will hear, by the music that we will sing. We welcome all those who are listening in on cable channel 12 and on our website and on our Facebook media page. And we welcome you too and hope that your day is blessed by our service. We will turn in the front of your hymnal to page 94. And we will begin our service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sin. As a called minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gathering song this morning is found on page 408, Come Thou Almighty King.
if you'll turn to page 203. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also. celebrate bulletin you'll find a prayer of the day would you play pray that with me benevolent God you are the source the guide and the goal of our lives teach us to love what is worth loving to reject what is offensive to you and to treasure what is precious in your sight through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord amen Jessica Stack will be our reader today. The first reading is from Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 2, and 12 through 14, chapter 2, verses 18 through 23. The teacher of wisdom who wrote, Ecclesiastes sees that working for a mere accumulation of wealth turns life into an empty game, a vanity of vanities. Nevertheless, he asserts in the next verse, it is good to find enjoyment in one's work, because such enjoyment is a gift from God. Vanity of vanities, says the teacher, vanity of vanities, all is vanity, 
I, the teacher, when king over Israel and Jerusalem, applied my mind to seek and to search out by wisdom all that is done under heaven. It is an unhappy business that God has given to human beings to be busy with. I saw all the deeds that are done under the sun, and see, all is vanity and a chasing after wind. I hated all my toil in which I had toiled under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to those who come after me, and who knows whether they will be wise or foolish. Yet they will be master of all for which I toiled and used my wisdom under the sun. This also is vanity. So I turned and gave my heart up to despair concerning all the toil of my labors under the sun, because sometimes one who has toiled with wisdom and knowledge and skill must leave all to be enjoyed by another who did not toil for it. This also is vanity and a great evil. What do mortals get from all the toil and strain with which they toil under the sun? For all their days are full of pain, and their work is a vexation. Even at night their minds do not rest. This also is vanity. Could you please join me in the reading? Psalm chapter 49, 1 through 12. Hear this, all you peoples. Give ear, all who dwell in the world. You are free and the rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and my heart shall meditate on understanding. I will incline my ear to a proverb, and set forth my riddle upon the heart. Why should I be afraid in evil days, when the wickedness of those at my heels surrounds me? One can never redeem another or give to God the ransom for another's life. For the ransom of my life is so great that there would never be enough to pay it. In order to live forever and never and never see the grave. For we see that the wise die also, like the dull and stupid they perish, and leave their wealth to those who come after them. Their graves shall be their homes forever their dwelling places from generation to generation, though they had named lands after themselves. Even though honored, they cannot live forever. They are like the beasts that perish. The second reading is Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 11. Life in Christ includes a radical reorientation of our values just as the newly baptized shed their old clothes and put on new garments. So Christians are called to let go of greed and take hold of a life shaped by God's love in Christ. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which is adultery. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. These are the ways you also once followed. When you were living that life, but now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old self with its practices, and have clothed yourself with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal, there is no longer Greek and Jew circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian and Scythian, slave and free, but Christ is all and in all.
Please rise for the gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter, beginning with verse 13. Glory to you, O Lord. I will read in your hearing. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who sent me to be your judge or arbiter over you? And he said to them, Take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, What should I do, for I have no place to store my crops? Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build large ones. And there I will store all my grains and my goods. And I will say to my soul, So, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you. And the things that you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. May the Lord add his blessing to what has been read and to what will be said. Please be seated. Let me start my sermon this morning with this uh, quotation by a man named Lester Pearson. He said, if a man has an apartment uh, stacked to the ceiling with newspaper, we call him crazy. If a woman has a trailer house full of cats, we call her nuts. But when people pathologically hoard so much cash that they impoverished the entire nation, we put them on the cover of Fortune magazine and pretend that they are role models. Interesting perspective, isn't it? You know, sometimes, uh, what a strange way we judge and value what is right and what is wrong in our culture. Shortly after I came to America, I got a summer job in Alexandria, Minnesota, at a Bible camp called Mount Carmel. At that time, I didn't have a car, so I called the camp director and asked for a ride. When he came to pick me up with his wife, Sonia, they were kind enough to leave me lots of space for my staff. However, all I had at that time was only one luggage. The interesting thing was that the following year, when they came again to pick me up, I waited for them with two good-sized luggage, a shoulder bag, a potted flower, a television set, a cassette player, and uh, some books in a plastic bag. When the camp director's wife uh, saw me with all that stuff, she smiled and she said, Oh, Ali, you are Americanized. <laughs> I wonder what she would say if she sees what I have now. If I have to move today, 
a good size you hold would not be enough uh, to carry all my belongings. Isn't that amazing how much we accumulate as we journey through life? Too bad that uh, we don't take all that with us when we leave this earth. I guess that is why they say there is no you hole behind the hearse. Huh? <laughs> Too bad that. Uh, you know, Job said this uh, in his book in chapter 1, verse 26. Naked I came from my mother's womb. Naked I shall return. The point is that we end where we started. If that is the case, why do we spend so much time and energy accumulating more and more if we come up empty hand at the end? Often we work hard to get what we want. And then when we have what we wanted, we strive for more. Don't we ever satisfy with what we have? How much more will it take before we say it is enough? There is a story told by a woman named Courtney Carvis. It is about an American businessman and a Mexican fisherman. The businessman was uh, at the shore of this small coastal Mexican village. And uh, he saw a boat coming with just uh, one fisherman. He pulled in and uh, inside that small boat were several large yellowfin tuna. The businessman compliment, complimented the Mexican fisherman on the quality of his fish. And he asked him how long it took him to catch them. The Mexican fisherman replied saying, only a little while. The businessman then said, why didn't you stay longer and catch more? The Mexican said uh, he had enough to support his family's immediate need. The businessman then asked him, saying, but what do you do with the rest of your time? The Mexican fisherman said, I sleep late, I fish little, play with my children, take a siesta with my wife, Maria, Maria, a stroll into the village each evening where I sip wine and play guitar with my amigos. I have full and busy life, senor. The businessman scoffed and said, I have masters in business administration from Harvard. Let me give you an advice that would help you to live a good life. And here is what you need to do. Spend more time fishing and with the proceed, buy a bigger boat. With the proceed from the bigger boat, you could buy several boats and eventually you would have a fleet of fishing boats. Then instead of selling your catch to the middleman, you would sell directly to the processor. And eventually, you would open your own cannery. In that way, you would control the product processing and distribution. Then you would leave this small coastal fishing village and move to Mexico City, then to LA, and then eventually to 
New York City, where you would run your expanded enterprise. The Mexican fisherman asked, but senor, how long will all these take? To which the businessman replied, 15 to 20 years. But what then, senor? The businessman smiled and said, that is the best part. When the time is right, you would sell your company stock to the public and become very rich. You would make millions. Millions, senor? Then what? The businessman said, then you will retire and move to a small coastal fishing village <laughs> where you would sleep late and fish little, play with your kids, take siesta with your wife, stroll into the village in the evening where you zip wine and play guitar with your amigos. The fisherman looked at him with surprise and said, isn't that what I'm doing now? <laughs> Interesting story, isn't it? It can make us wonder how one can do more with less. Our gospel lesson for today also talks about a farmer who spent years accumulating wealth. He was hoping to retire early and live happily after. But something changed all of that. Here is his story as it was told by Jesus himself. There was a farmer who had a good farmland that produced fine crops for him. When he saw how good the harvest was, he said to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store all my grains. Then he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And then I will store all my grains there. And then I will say to my soul, so, you have lots of good things stored away for years to come. So take it easy, relax, eat and drink and enjoy life. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life is being demanded from you. Who will get all these wealth you have accumulated? Why is this man called fool? Was it because he was rich? Oh no. Nothing is, nothing wrong with that. In fact, the desire to have more wealth, more power, more security, more things is in all of us. So it is okay to desire better life to dream about being wealthy and rich and work hard for it. Who among us doesn't want to have more, to retire easily, uh, to retire early and uh, enjoy life? In fact, if once in a while we don't dream about these things, there is something wrong in us. After all, it is when we have that, we can reach out and help those who are in need. Therefore, to be rich and wealthy is not sin, as long as we acquire our wealth in honest ways. And many of godly peoples were, that we read in our Bible, were well-off people, some of them even very, very rich. But the problem with this person was that he lived his life as if he was an island. 
self-sustained. We didn't need anyone or didn't care about anyone. As if he was the master of his destiny. And he wasn't wise enough to know how he had no control over his future. And that is why he was called fool. His perspective on life reminds me of uh, what James said in his letter in chapter 3. He said, now listen to me. Those of you who say, today and tomorrow we will go to such and such city. Spend a year there and making money. But you don't even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are like a mist or a morning dew that appears for a little while and then vanishes. And instead, you ought to say, if it is God's will and we live, we will do this and that, and we will go here and there. In another way, what James is saying to us is, include God in all your plans. Look at this man. He seemed to live his life without any thought about God, about others, and about life after death. His aim in life wasn't higher than the animals that live and die without a conscience. He looked upon his wealth not as a gift from God, but rather as if everything he possessed were by his own and for his own. He said, I would say to my soul, eat and drink and enjoy life. Isn't God who created him and who blessed him with good wealth, good health, so that he may work and be prosperous? His attitude was quite different from many of godly, God's people that we read in our Bible. For example, the writer of Psalm 103 said this, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that was in me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and don't forget all his benefits, who forgives all your sins, and who redeem your soul from the grave, who satisfies you with good things. You see, one thing we learn from this is how we are not the master of our destiny, as we often like to think. Look at this fool rich man. He saw the future as abundantly provided for him. There is nothing for him but to treasure and enjoy life to its fullness. While this man was looking forward to the years of retirement and easy life, destiny was making different plans for him. In just a few minutes, all that he worked for all his lifetime to secure his future would become worthless for him. Now, who will have all these wealth which he had accumulated? Oh, how many of us live with such false sense of security? Thinking that everything is going to be all right. Dear friends in Christ, the journey of life is uncertain. We don't know what today or tomorrow has in the store for us. The question then is this, would you live and die as this fool man did with all your toys 
Or would you learn, li learn and live and be thankful for what you have and share your blessing with those around you? Would you make selfish choices to benefit only you or would you make a choice that would make a difference uh, in your own life and in the life of those around you? Suppose that uh, you die today. What would happen to all that you have accumulated? That is a question that frequently comes in our first lesson for today in the book of Ecclesiastes and in the book of Psalms too. In today's gospel also, Jesus warned us not to let our blessing become the most important things in our life because there is more to life than just what we have, what we owe. They say, a stored wealth benefits no one unless it is shared with others. So, don't make the same mistake uh, that rich, full man did. If you are blessed with abundance, use it in a way that brings glory to God and joy to those around you. Oh, thanks be to God who blessed us with so many things so that we can become a blessing to others. Amen. Now we will sing our sermon hymn, Praise and Thanksgiving, hymn 689. our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. 
He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And then let us pray uh, the prayers of intercession is found in your insert. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. O God, you are wholeness. Where there is division in your church, bring reconciliation and healing. Guide the work of theologians, Sunday school teachers, seminary professors, and all who provide instruction for the building up of your church. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O oh God, you are the source of all life. Where creation cries out in distress, bring relief and renewal. Bless farmers, ranchers, distributors, and all who provide our food. Nourish the land and all its inhabitants. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O oh God, you are wisdom. Where nations and communities yearn for peace, bring justice. Strengthen those who toil for the welfare of others, especially military personnel, police, first responders, and activists, and for the healing of the nations. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O oh God, you are life. Where your people are overwhelmed with the busyness of life, bring encouragement. Accompany all who experience emotional, mental, or physical distress. Today we especially remember Glenn Rocco, Shirley Nordahl, Bruce Bonches, the family of Jackie Jensen, and all others who we name in our hearts. Renew us at your table of mercy. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O oh God, you are our treasure. Where scarcity and anxiety pervade your church, bring abundance and vitality. Guide the church the work of church councils and committees and give them clarity for the work of ministry in this place. Merciful God, receive our prayer. O oh God, you are resurrection. We give you thanks for all the saints, especially we think of Jackie Jensen. Inspire us by your example of faithful living to set our minds on things above and to be rich in love toward you. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. And, and so we pray the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We have a few announcements this morning. Our radio broadcast, One Week Delayed, is sponsored by Cleo Rytan and Kimberly Bullis in honor of Kenny Rytan's 90th birthday, which was on the 28th of July. So we thank Cleo and Kim for their continued support of our radio ministry, and we all wish Kenny, a wonderful 90th year. Tomorrow, Monday, not, yeah, tomorrow's Monday, uh, August 1st, um, Vacation Bible School starts in the afternoon uh, at 4.45 with a supper and uh, classes then from 5.20 to 7.45. And so I would ask, your prayers for the children that are attending there and for the teachers that will be teaching them this week um, as they learn 
Um, I'm not exactly sure what the theme is this year. Do you know? No. Okay. I guess it doesn't matter, but I'm, I'm hoping that the kids have a wonderful time over at Bethel. And uh, Shirley Nordahl, as you heard, is in our prayers yet. Um, both she and um, Glenn are now at St. Catharines. And so if you have a chance to stop and visit them, um, please do. Tomorrow evening, at 6.30, we have a special interest meeting that the Board of Property and Church Council have called. Um, everyone is invited to hear and discuss the various options for the elevator, but also for our building. And so that meeting is tomorrow evening at 6.30. Come with ideas, with discussion, um, in mind and uh, if you don't come to the meeting you can't say anything afterwards I guess so come tomorrow evening uh, thank you to all who have made uh, contributions for our wall unit air conditioners they are expected to be installed soon in Pastor Ali's office in the church office and I believe the other one's going over into the Luther room um, on August 10th, there is going to be a food, fun, and fellowship evening at the pool. Um, it's for all members of Breckenridge, Breckenridge Lutheran. An adult must accompany any child that comes that is under 12, and you're asked to bring a friend and come and spend an evening um, of fun and relaxation. This is the last day of uh, July for our mission, monthly mission for Valley Lake. So if you have a donation to give, we would ask that, that you get that into the church today. On Tuesday, coffee with the staff at 9.30. On Thursday morning, uh, men's breakfast meeting at the frying pan. And on Friday morning at 9.30 again, coffee with the staff. Does anyone else have other announcements? If not, let us go to our hymnal again, just page 790, and sing day by day. And we haven't stood all day, so stand up. <laughs>
thanks again for joining us today for worship, especially those of you who are our guests and friends. Now receive the benediction. As you go on your way, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you in favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please come and join us if you have time. We do have a f coffee and fellowship downstairs. And uh, now as you go on your way, go and serve the Lord.